Extreme Outer Limits is presented by Night Force Optics. Precision optics for precision shooting. Thanks for joining us here on Extreme Outer Limits. This is going to be a compilation mm -hmm. of our entire adventure here with Arctic Red River Outfitters in the NWT. Mm -hmm. And we were here for a total of 21 days Yes. on this hunt. It's been uh, an adventure and an exciting adventure to say the least. Uh, this hunt was unlike anything we had ever done. You know, Tavis said it best. This is a camp that you won't necessarily be talking about the animal or animals that you harvested while you're here, mm -hmm. but it's the stories that will last a lifetime. Right, years to come, that's what we're gonna remember the most. Once we arrived here at camp, uh, we were basically greeted by the crew, uh, Tavis, Rebecca, and their crew. And um, we were able to get a warm meal and, and kind of hang out and get our licenses and tags and everything sorted out. Uh, so once the weather cleared, we were able to load up in the Cubs, and a few trips later, we were in a camp that they call Mushroom. Right. Once we were able to get into camp, we were uh, greeted by our guide, Cody, mm -hmm. and Wrangler, Braden. Mm -hmm. uh, great combination of guys. Uh, Cody was able to stay with us the duration, and Braden uh, is in a wrangling position, so he stayed with the horses even when we, we left that arrangement. But eventually, we got on a couple rams that we're several miles from our location. So we took the several hour horse ride over there and uh, made another stock up the mountain mm -hmm. and got to right within about 800 yards. Cody went ahead and moved into a different angle, got that spotter on him and uh, came back and said the words I did not want to hear, which was, <laughs> we can't shoot, he's eight years old. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't wrap my head around. I'm like, how is a, you know, if 10 years is your mark, what changes between 10 and 8 because this thing had the complete mm -hmm. look but mm -hmm. it's the mass that they push out mm -hmm. right it's those bases just get mass 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 and uh they said what he could be in two years is yeah would be phenomenal phenomenal he just didn't make the mark so we left him was it the next day the next day i think we got we bad got, weather we got bad weather mm -hmm. but i believe before that weather come in Cody was able to make a climb to that hill right outside of camp. Well, the weather was there. It parted, the fog actually lifted for a tiny little bit, and he was up there and he spotted them. And then the fog, I mean, the minute he came down the hill to get his spotter, Braden and I were there, and Braden and I grabbed okay, his spotter, got on a horse, and we went up, and by the time we got up there, the fog had taken over, and we never <laughs> saw them again the rest of the day. So what he had seen before that fog closed in was a group of four or five rams so, lo and behold, two days later, <laughs> yeah, after, after sitting in camp, <laughs> after the weather cleared and a lot of playing cards and everything else just to keep us entertained, he climbed right back on the hill and looked down there, and sure enough, that same group of rams had not moved. Mm -hmm. So we rode and rode and rode. I believe it took about what three hours. It feels like. Yeah, that sounds about right. We got the horses parked, um, you know, right at the upper end of the tree line, mm -hmm. base foot of the hill, mm -hmm. and uh, got our gear organized and set out on foot. And I remember we just went vertical, vertical, and more vertical. And the fog was just coming in and out, in and out. And I remember we got to a spot where we could see up, and we thought there was rock formations mm -hmm. above us that were really similar to what, you know, where the sheep had yeah, been right spotted. In that area. Right. Mm -hmm. And we got in a position and sure enough, turned the rams up. Mm -hmm. And there was actually two old rams in the group. Mm -hmm. One was broomed, and then there's the one that we ended up deciding to shoot. Um, both of which they had no problem saying, hey, we're, we're way over the 10 year mm -hmm. mark. We're good to go. Kind of almost asked me, what do you like? You know, do you, this look, that look. And then Cody ended up saying, no, this is the better ram for sure, let's go for this one. Mm -hmm. At that point, I confirmed with everybody, we're good, we're good, everybody agreed, and the rest is pretty much history, right? A good clean shot, 470 some yards, had my very first doll ram, it was really, really cool.
This segment is brought to you by the Night Force 5 to 25 by 56 Enhanced ATAC R Rifle Scope. Features a lightning fast 30 minute per revolution zero stop turret, a 34 millimeter tube allowing for 120 minutes of adjustment, and ED glass producing brilliant images and exceptional color contrast. The new Zeiss Victory RF laser range finding binocular provides you accurate ranges and ballistic corrections from 11 to 2,500 yards. A fully customizable ballistics platform, Bluetooth connectivity, and a phenomenal binocular all in a compact and lightweight unit. The new Zeiss Victory RF is EOL's range finder of choice. Going on to the caribou, what we weren't seeing a lot of caribou at the mushroom camp. So we actually ended up taking two days to horse uh, from Mushroom to another camp mm -hmm. and then from that camp over the pass mm -hmm. into a camp that everybody felt pretty good that would yeah. have, you know, caribou. We got over to uh, that destination, that camp that we wanted to be. We got weathered out again. Mm -hmm. And I, every time you get weathered out, it's pretty much that day and then it seems like it carries into the next day and it almost gets into the majority of that next day. You're right. pretty much gonna lose two. Right. And then the days kind of progressed. Uh, we did a lot of horse riding. We covered a lot of ground and we essentially got you right into the saddle between the two highest peaks on that hill. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Cody peered over, he's like, thumbs up, we got him. They're mm -hmm. right down here. And I remember as soon as I peeked up and that wind hit me, literally backing right back down, mm -hmm. pulling my pack apart, whereas normally I would be super jacked. Okay, it's, it's time <laughs> to shoot. I remember I didn't touch a single part of my shooting gear. I scrounged for every piece of clothes I had uh -huh. just to get to where I was warm enough to keep myself mentally together. Because mm -hmm. we were not gonna sneak back on that hill no. In just our t-shirts. And I did the happen. same thing. I definitely came back off the ridge after I saw him. And I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to even make any attempts at, at shooting this animal if I don't have some clothes on. Yeah. And I did. I put all my stuff back on as well, which is good. You yeah. know, you're used to shooting that way anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, we got suited back up. And uh, we, we went through everything. We kind of went through the scenario. I remember ranging, getting everything. You were you were good. I remember we got everything kind of sorted and then we just inched you up, inched mm -hmm. you up. Inched, and then I came up right next to you and I popped that range just as a recheck. I remember I got the dope, we dialed it in and, and everything was pretty much set for you. You had a great I had a great back, shoot, yeah. Rest. Shooting position was perfect. I, I couldn't ask for better. And, and that's, you know, when I'm most comfortable, obviously. Yep, I gave Chris the aiming point we did the dial and you made a crazy good shot. We got down there, velvet, mm -hmm. a little bit hanging, I remember. Just starting to, just starting to turn. Yeah, I remember grabbing it for the photos and you kind of had to be a little careful because it was loose, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was mm -hmm. coming Very free delicate. Of it. But a uh, beautiful, beautiful bull, big yeah. friend bull. Um, I don't think you could ask for a better one. I, I was thrilled, I was, yeah, I was I was overly thrilled because of the circumstances, so definitely, yeah. Yeah, good. I was pretty happy with him. So, we went to work, got the knives out, got that bull packed off the hill, and that was another late one. We had to pack that bull back up and mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. and then um, I would say we had near a mile to go down to the horses, mm -hmm. so it was a good long night, but nevertheless, it was worth it. Yes. This segment of Extreme Outer Limits was brought to you by the Extreme Shooting School, hosted by Bob Beck, an information-packed two-day class. For more information, go to ExtremeOuterLimitsTV.com. This segment is brought to you by the Extreme Store. For all your brass, bullets, and ammunition needs, head to ExtremeStore.us. After about five days of hunting, four to five days of hunting in the area after you'd uh, harvested your caribou, we could significantly see a drop in the in the sightings right and so we knew that a move was going to be needed mm -hmm. well with the, the areas that were available to go move us to we were going to be leaving the horse string mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we were only going to be able to take limited gear and since you were tagged out it make made the most sense that you would go and come back to base right. and i would just go with the backpack mm -hmm. up to a place that they call death valley mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why they call it Death Valley <laughs> for me. That was the coldest night I can remember. It's because I wasn't there. In so long. <laughs> there was I no cuddling. don't even know that I've ever been that cold at night. Uh, all the trees were gone. Mm -hmm. 
we had climbed, uh, you know, 1,200 plus feet in elevation. I was going to say, it was your elevation was why there was no trees. And then the wind. Right. So the wind chill was what killed me on that mm -hmm. night. So I remember telling Cody, I said, I don't think I could do another night because mm -hmm. I can't sleep. So I'm not able to hike very well. I don't feel very good. I'm kind of sick feeling. Cody makes a call to Tavis and says, hey, we're going to have to get pulled out of here. It's not a conducive situation it's with the idea. gear that we have. Um, and so they said, okay. And I remember Cody just walking back to me and no more than sitting down and saying, okay, we're going to get moved. It's going to be about this much time uh, before the plane can come and get us, which you guys might be able to hear in the background. They're There's, making yeah, runs right now. They're always making runs. Right then and there, the caribou come around the foot of the hill that we are sitting on. And I just looked and I'm like, what is that? And I grab my binos and I look and there is a bull with points everywhere. <laughs> and I remember saying, no gun. Because the, our tent was right in the valley right. on the river. Off the airstrip. Yeah, right, right in the riverbed. Mm -hmm. And we were just hiking up to advantage. So I just remember running as fast as I could run without falling over to go to the tent to get the gun. Mm -hmm. We get down there rummage through the tent, grab the gun, get the camera, and back up the hill we go. And uh, probably about the time the camera came on, it was a quick description of what is going on, what is happening, and this is what we're doing. <laughs> and before I knew it, we were on a little hump, and I was throwing down the bipod and getting ready. And what was happening was this about, you know, approximate dozen caribou, this bull was actually rutting. He was completely rubbed out. He's already brown. He was pushing cows and being all crazy in there. And so there was cows yeah. just covering him up and just moving, you know, there was a wave of them in there. But nevertheless, we were able to just keep it together. They didn't know we were there and uh, threaded it in there. We got, we got him hit and then we had to work on getting him down. So in the end of the deal, uh, we ended up walking up to a big, big caribou. And, and what was really cool was all the points. This segment of Extreme Outer Limits is brought to you by Benchmark Barrels, the rifle barrel of choice for long-range hunters, competition shooters, and sports shooters worldwide. Ask for one on your next rebarrel or custom rifle build. This segment of Extreme Outer Limits is brought to you by Kestrel Ballistics Weather Meters, the perfect match of long-range ballistics and environment. Get precision aiming solutions for your gun, your load, and your shot. So in short, Chris killed the biggest moose that's ever been killed in the world. <laughs> or close to it. <laughs> uh, uh. All right, all right, all right. So we had, uh, after flight time, mm -hmm. we essentially had a day and a half. Right, which we basically landed on the airstrip and set up camp on the airstrip. Yeah, yeah, just off the side. Ended up getting a night's sleep and uh, the idea was, well, we didn't have a shooter that we put to bed, but let's get out at first light. It was actually the earliest that we'd woke up out of the entire trip because Cody had said, hey, these moose are kind of nocturnal. Right. You really want to be out there in the morning and you really want to hunt until dark. Mm -hmm. Got up in the morning and started glassing right away, right away, just hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, and nothing. And uh, so finally, a couple hours gone by and it's like, well, let's just go have breakfast and then think about our game plan. So. We kind of had a running joke because every <laughs> single morning that we had pancakes. So if you come to Arctic Red, you got to request, request the you, pancakes. I'm telling you, it's the in lucky camp. charm. Yeah. So we went in, got to the usual bacon, the eggs, and we were like, dude, Cody, let's have some pancakes. Had some pancakes. So then it was like, you know what? We need to hike all the way up and over that hill and see what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to be what we need to, you know, just turn our luck. Anyway, we headed up and over, and uh, of course, you know, Cody Longlegs, he was ahead of us, and so we get to where we can see, and he's thumbing up, you know, like, uh, and, and we're already, like, what? They got it bull spotted? And so we get up there as fast as we can, you know, huffing, puffing, sweating, and it's like, we got this hammer moose. He's huge. He's right over there. So off we go, and finally, I remember I got my first range of 1,400 yards, 
And then that's when we started really deliberating, okay, what's the wind doing? What's the plan? Let's mm -hmm. get here, let's get there. Couldn't have went any better. We, we probably stalked in for a good, I don't know, well, you shot 800 it, yards. You shot at 290, so oh, gosh. I mean, do the we math, We stalked right? in, yeah, for a th over 1,000 yards. yards. Yeah, so um, we decided to come in uh, almost on top of him a little bit just because he had since laid down and all you could really see was his antlers in the, Just the top yeah, yeah yeah in the willows um, but we finally got to a vantage point where uh, I felt comfortable um, Bob set up the rifle on the on the hill and uh, I got behind it and basically all I could see was his antlers and just the tops of his ears and the top of his head yeah. and Cody decided he was going to do some um, cow calls and he started out doing the cow calls and the moose just was completely still and I was completely ready and on him um, for when he stood up. Finally, the moose's head turned towards us and I thought, okay, mm. here we go. And I mean, talk Hold about talk about having some major excitement right there behind the rifle. Uh, when that animal stood up, holy <laughs> cow. I was excited, but I, I had my protocols, all my list of things that I know what I need to do and I basically asked if everybody was ready and all I kept thinking to myself was just press and I pressed that trigger and that first bullet went it right him. in that, the boiler point yeah 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 that that right. first bullet killed him but so I think I ended up putting three in him well before he, he turned actually... for you really good right because he gave you that shot yes and then he actually turned the other way and you put one right behind the other shoulder yeah. which yeah. really sealed the deal and then you kind of took that one where he was kind of going away, but you found an angle in there, and that one actually just that mm -hmm. one anchored him. Finally either anchored way, him, he was yeah. he was done. So I knew that I was in for a great surprise, but I had no idea that when I got up to this animal, it was going to be as big as it was. I was I was actually extremely surprised, like that it was as ginormous of a body animal. I've never ever been that close to an animal that big. All right, well. We're gonna kind of conclude um, this series of episodes here, and it's it's kind of a, a, a tough one here because we've had such a great trip with so many uh, good memories. Yes. Um, but kind of segueing on the memory thing, uh, two days ago, I guess it'd be a day and a half, excuse me, I got a not good message on my inReach. Um, and keep in mind, I didn't know um, him personally that well, um, but QU has been a, a, a proud sponsor of Extreme Iron Limits for the last couple of years. And we'd actually taken a, a moment earlier in the hunt behind my sheep to kind of give a, a thanks to that crew because this is a trip that, um, or a trip like this, we've never done it before. We didn't know how to gear. Um, you know, there's certain items and fabric materials and things that you kind of need to know and understand to navigate through. That we a, a wouldn't trip. even have thought about because we right. don't, yeah, we don't typically go back country like yeah. this for long periods of time. So, so this TV game is, is, you know, it's where a lot of good people and companies come together um, for marketing efforts for their companies. Um, you know, we don't get paid to be on TV and, and the companies that are associated are all putting forth an effort to try to bring to market, you know, the best products that they can and, and service, uh, you know, service consumers to, to the best of their ability. Well, QU uh, stood behind us really, really well on this one. We were able to ask advice and the guys over there were really good and, and they helped out with a lot of gear. And so, as we moved through this trip to a day and a half ago, I got a message um, saying that uh, Jason Harrison, the owner of QU, has had an Pass. untimely passing. And so uh, we kind of want to just dedicate this series back to those mm -hmm. guys, uh, you know, his family and, and everyone around him. Um, I wish I had known the guy a little better. I actually truthfully envy him a little bit because He's so successful in this industry and his marketing strategy and, and just the things that he had done, it always kind of been something in the back of my mind on how I've done a few things that we've done, right? Mm -hmm. He was almost kind of the pioneer of bringing the, the, the self-consumer uh, direct sales model mm -hmm. uh, to our industry. And uh, so 
anyway, I'm kind of rambling, but just wanted to kind of dedicate these episodes to, to him and his family, and then hopefully that memory lives on. So that's all we've got for you guys this week and, and the preceding weeks. And next time you see us, we'll be back out west. We're headed to our Star Valley camp to start some great mule deer and elk hunts. We'll see you guys then. Extreme Outer Limits is brought to you by McMillan Stocks, Benchmark Barrels, Kestrel Ballistics Weather Meters, Night Force Optics, MOA Rifles, 